check the URA master plan. Don't just buy based on what's currently around the property, buy based on what's going to be there in the future. Hi, I'm Ryan Ong from Stacked Homes. Today, we're going to be talking about how to use the URA master plan when you're comparing your properties. If you're new to this, when you go to the URA website and you open up the master plan, you're going to see a bunch of colored blocks and very often we find that people are completely lost. They're not sure what they're looking at. Today, we're going to give you a rundown on the basics so that you can interpret what you see on that map. Now on the URA master plan, we're going to be looking at seven main things. Nearby residential units and their plot ratios. We're going to look at transport facilities. We're going to look at future or current schools. We're going to look at the nearby commercial zones, the nearby industrial zones. Uh, places of worship and hospitals. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about white sites. Let's look at nearby residential zones and their plot ratios. Uh, and that number that you see there indicates the plot ratio. Now, the residential zones are important because you want to know what other forms of housing are going to be built around your property. You don't want a situation where you have an empty residential plot in front of you, you buy your condo and then a few years down the road, another massive condo springs out in front of you, it blocks your sea view, it blocks your view, and then uh, traffic and noise get heavier as well. So in general, most people don't want too many other residential zones around them, which can provide competition for tenants, can provide competition for buyers later on. Now the residential zones, the numbers in the residential zones indicate the plot ratio, and it's quite important to know what these means. In general, a GPR, a gross plot ratio of 1.4 under generally means low density housing. You tend to see that a lot in, for example, landed housing enclaves. At 1.4, the maximum height of a residential development there is five stories. So you can be quite sure that your view generally won't be blocked. A medium density is 2.1. This is where many condos uh, are likely to spring up in the future. Uh, future developments are capped at around 24 storeys. Uh, GPR of 2.8 or higher is a very high density area. The housing can go all the way up to 36 storeys. And you should probably be careful about how you're gonna pick a unit with the right facing and height if there's such a dense, uh, if there's such a dense residential area that's close to your property. Second, let's look at uh, transport nodes or transport facilities. These are highlighted in grey. Now it gets a little bit tricky, MRT stations can be hard to spot on the URA master plan. Uh, some of them disappear into the blue uh, commercial zones, such as when they are integrated into a shopping mall or some other integrated development. So because of this, we generally suggest you cross-reference it with the Land Transport Authority or LTA website. Of course, having an MRT station nearby is always great. Most people look forward to that. But if your unit is too close to the MRT station or directly facing the MRT station, you may get a bit of noise pollution. An under construction MRT station is a good thing. You may be getting a good deal in that that improves your rentability and saleability later. But bear in mind, the developer has probably already priced that into the unit that you're buying. The third thing to look for is current or future schools. For those of you who have children, you probably already know uh, primary school registration, being able to get into the school of your choice, a lot of it depends on being within that magic one kilometer radius. Beyond uh, primary and secondary schools, if you are a landlord, if you're looking for student tenants, you typically want to have universities, tertiary education institutes nearby because students are more likely to rent near, near campus. Ideally, you want to try to find a place with multiple schools within a one kilometer radius. Even if your children don't go to those particular schools, even though you may not have used for those schools yourself, it does help with future sales and of course with rental. There is an old rule of thumb, which has never been proven by the way, which says that the ideal distance is within one kilometer of a school, but at least three to 500 meters away. Uh, in theory, this should put you within convenient uh, walking distance of the school, while at the same time sparing you from the noise and the traffic that school areas tend to generate. But again, uh, there has never actually been any study on that. It's just a very old saying in the market. Next, we're gonna look at commercial zones. These are the blue zones that you see on the map. Many, but not all homeowners like to be within roughly five to 600 meters of these commercial zones. This is far enough to be 
unaffected by the noise and the crowds but at the same time it still puts you within a roughly five to six minute walk of retail facilities and eateries. So this is kind of the magic distance for many homeowners but not all. You have some owners who like living right next to the mall, they like having a major mall right next to them, they like being directly on top of a mall in which case they want an integrated development. Uh, these are things to watch for as well. Uh, remember on the URA master plan you're looking forward into the future so those eateries, those retail facilities may not be there right now but it's good to know that they may be there in the future. Next we'll look at industrial zones, these are the these magenta coloured areas. They can be business one which suggests light industry or business two which is heavier industry. Note that heavy industry generally doesn't mean something as heavy as say uh, fuel refineries for example, these are all things that are located in Jurong Island. So in Singapore, even the heavy industry is not too polluting or not too noisy. In general, you do want to keep further away from these areas. The only exception to this is of course, if you're intending to play landlord, if you want to rent your unit to people who are working in these industrial areas, you may not mind having them nearby. Next, we're going to talk about places of worship. The main issue regarding places of worship is the fear of traffic congestion. So one example of this, for example, would be residents in the Siglap area. Uh, if you live there, you know what I'm talking about. There are even traffic wardens there sometimes when uh, religious services are going on because the roads there are a little bit more narrow, but you have a lot of people coming in and it's very difficult to coordinate all the cars coming in and going out at the same time. Uh, this has on occasion caused some people to be unable to back out out of their own driveway. So this is the main fear with places of worship. Uh, some people do also feel that there is a lot of noise. Again though, finally, this is all very subjective. There are some people who do want to live near hospitals and places of worship. Some people do want access to that healthcare. And of course, some people who are very active in, in their particular religious community, if they help out, they're volunteers, they of course may not mind living quite close to a place of worship. Finally, we come down to white sites. Uh, white sites are areas designated for certain special concepts, you could say. So an example would be the 100 hectare site in the Woodlands area, which was designated for the Woodlands Regional Centre. Now, the URA selects the developer for these white sites based on the different concepts that the developers come up with and how well that agrees with URA's vision. Now that means these white sites may be a combination of anything. It could be commercial, residential, there could be hotels, there could be offices. Uh, it just has to fit what URA has in mind for it. In practice though, most property buyers will see having white sites close by as a positive because if it turns out to be a new live work play hub, for example, with restaurants, with recreational facilities, that is probably great for resale gains and for finding tenants. And so far, most of the URA white sites, like the Woodlands Regional Centre, again, uh, have provided a very positive boost to surrounding properties. At the time, time that I'm speaking, the most watched site right now is the Kampong Bugis plot uh, in the Kalang area. So to conclude, Singapore's landscape is very dynamic. Things can change very fast. We saw that, for example, with the Jurong Lake District where Jurong went from being a primarily industrial area to being something of a retail powerhouse nowadays actually. And because of that, it's quite important to look at the master plan, understand what all those coloured blocks you're looking at are. And when you do get a property, again, don't just look at what's there right now. Uh, try to look at what's going to be there in the future. And if you want in-depth reviews of properties near great sites, then do come and check out Stacked Homes. And if you have any questions about properties in any particular areas, you're not sure what's going on with the URA master plan, you can also drop us a message on Facebook. We'll be glad to help you out.